Hey, and welcome back to The Road Goes On Costa Rica. In the next couple of episodes, I'm going to start delving into the culture of Costa Rica, and the first stop is food. Mostly because food is one of my favorite subjects ever, and possibly the thing I'm looking forward to the most when I visit. In my research of food, I've discovered a lot of countries that do not claim the title of first world country often have a better and healthier and tastier food options. Looking at regular Canadian diet, we have some of the highest salt and unhealthy fat intakes, yet we are considered a very rich country with access to a healthy diet and lifestyle options. Whatever caused this odd health imbalance, it has led me to my search of good healthy food that doesn't require paying out several hundred dollars for a meal plan and food substitutes. I haven't yet discovered how a good diet can be found in many second and third world countries, yet it still eludes first world countries, but it allows me to admire those healthy diets even more, and I eagerly anticipate being able to try these amazing new foods. So, naturally, I was very excited to research Costa Rican food. The backbone of Costa Rican diets is black beans and rice. Their dishes are generally quite healthy despite being prepared with oils high in saturated fats. They also do not eat in excess. Costa Rican portions are smaller compared with our North American diets. Lunch is their primary meal of the day, utilizing the energy gained from lunch to make it through the afternoon rather than having excess energy in the evening where it can be easily wasted. A regular meal consists of rice, beans, meat or fish, fried plantains, and a carrot, tomato, and cabbage salad. Meals are often served with a good portion of fruits and vegetables as well as being high in fiber. The plantain has the appearance of a large banana, but it cannot be eaten raw. When fried or baked, it is very sweet and delicious, and sometimes it is made into a potato chip substitute if cut thinly enough and fried in oil. I have eaten plantain several years ago. I went on a trip to Montreal with my old roommate and her family to visit an aunt and uncle. Her family was Spanish from Central America, so even though I was in Montreal for the weekend, the culture I got was very Spanish, from the language and the food and hospitality. Her aunt made plantains for her breakfast one morning, and they were amazing. I've only had them the one time, and I'm very much looking forward to having them again. Common breakfasts in Costa Rica include black beans and rice, seasons with onions, peppers, and fried eggs, sour cream, and corn tortillas. Soups and stews are also common dishes, where most vegetables are used. Vegetables are also often eaten in salads. Corn is one of the most favored veggies, and is usually consumed in the form of tortillas or corn pancakes. Empanadas are also common, and I often found them in my fridge when I was living with my Spanish roommate. They are corn turnovers filled with beans, cheese, and maybe potatoes and meat. Fruit is also big in Costa Rica, and they have plenty of different kinds of fruit to choose from. Papaya, mango, pineapples, watermelon, cantaloupe, blackberries, lemons, and avocados are just some of the variety. They also drink refrescos, which is a fruit drink blended with ice and sounds delicious. Marañón is a fruit whose seeds are what we know as cashew nuts. The skin of this fruit is very bitter, but the flesh is delicious. And a fun fact is the cashew nut must be roasted, otherwise it is poisonous to the eater. When it comes to meat, roast pork is a staple, though chicken is also on their menu. They are often roasted over coffee wood for a savory, smoky flavor. There are also plenty of succulent desserts, including cappuccino, which is ice cream dipped in chocolate, and tres leches, a three-layered custard flan, which is their national dessert. Drinks include refrescos, beer, guaro, a clear white spirit difficult for tourists to handle, and coffee, which is an extremely important drink. I'm more of a tea drinker, so I'm not sure if I should experiment with Costa Rican coffee or avoid it because I can't seem to handle North American coffee. Like every country, there are pockets of it that have their own amazing food culture and tastes that can vary from the basic stock. I'll be traveling around San Jose and then out to the Nicoyan Peninsula, so I won't get a chance to eat the food on the Atlantic side, but nonetheless, I'm dying to try all the other new foods. Next episode, I'll be looking at marriage and family life to see if I can get a better idea of what life is like for Costa Ricans. Any questions, comments, or concerns, just leave a message in the comment section below, and I hope you enjoyed this crash course on Costa Rican food.